So first things first today, uh, we're, we're going to take a, a little bit of a, a detour from just understanding data, right? Now I want you to start thinking a little bit more graphically about the information that's flowing through. Okay, so rather than just focusing on, you know, lists of information, now we're going to start putting things uh, into two-dimensional and three-dimensional terms. And I'm going to introduce uh, a few new um, terms that you need to know, definitions that you need to know, uh, in order to really kind of understand what I'm talking about when we proceed into more complex ideas. Okay, so first up, um, let's develop... Um, let's develop the grid again, and I'm going to sort of maybe do a few things differently, but not this one. Uh, go to the grid panel, uh, or the vector tab, grid panel, and this time we're just going to build a square. Square grid. Now the square grid, you'll see it's a little bit simpler than the rectangular grid, because obviously if it's always square, um, then you don't really need to worry about size in the X and size in the Y because it's always going to be the same. So um, just leaving it at the origin then, all I need are three sliders. I need a slider for um, the size of the cell, and that counts for the X and Y, like I said, and then obviously the extents or the count in each direction, how many cells. So remember, double click will open up the search bar and uh, the syntax that you need in order to generate a slider right off the bat is uh, a number that you start with, in this case zero, less than the number that you want your slider to uh, begin with. I, uh, I need a better term for that. Want your slider to have as a default value, so we can make this five, and then less than whatever the maximum value is of your slider, which is 10 and hit enter. So before I plug that in, um, I, I sort of bypassed some of the functions of the slider feature. So I want to go over that now. Um, the slider is something that uh, you, can, you can build it a few ways. You can pull it in from the params panel right here under uh, input. And then you'll notice that it creates different numbers than what I typed in. That's because the shortcut that I gave you uh, basically bypasses manually setting it up each time. If you need to change that value, right, we double click this, and I know you saw this, but I didn't explain necessarily everything that's on it. Yeah? Are you recording? I am, thank you. Um, so this has a, a few different things that you should be aware of uh, to help you organize your file, right? Um, the There are a lot of different types of information that you'll be putting into your models and keeping track of what information influences what part of your model is kind of important. So almost every component you have has a name override. So while it says, right now it just says slider, I could call this whatever I want. So I could call this uh, grid size. And what that's going to do when I hit OK is it's going to change that front end to, say, grid size. So keep in mind, though, at the same time, when I, um, if I just leave it at default and I plug it into something, it'll actually borrow the naming properties of that thing. But if I uh, custom name it and I plug it in, it'll stick with the custom name that I gave it. Okay, so it's not a super intriguing idea yet, but you'll see that it becomes much more uh, necessary to keep things organized later on. So likewise, I can uh, copy and paste this down. Actually, you probably don't want to copy and paste those because it has a custom name. So I'll just make a new one, zero, less than five, less than 10. And these ones, probably not that imperative because now I know where my grid is coming from, so I'll just plug these in at X and Y. Um, for, um, for the sake of a challenge, just make sure, I don't care what numbers you choose for now, but just make sure that you have a different value for Y and X, and uh, the grid size is really not all that relevant. Okay, we just need to know that you can change it for now. 
<clears throat> Any questions so far? Okay. Similarly, um, since I'm on the subject of like naming and organizing things, you also have the ability to change the way Grasshopper shows the different components and nodes um, and naming conventions to you. And a lot of them are really cool. Um, so this one right here, uh, there's no reason you can't just change the name of what square grid actually means. So if square grid is not enough information, or if I have six different square grids and I need to know which one is which, I can right click and at the top of this menu I can call it grid number one. Or whatever you want to call it. Super grid, primary grid, awesome grid. All right, <clears throat> so um, with that said, uh, another thing that I am going to try to do for you um, for certain types of components, um, and I didn't do it yesterday for time's sake, but I like, to, um, I like to put little tags on top of the components that I drop in so that you have a visual cue of where it came from because many of them are a little confusing and while you're looking at it up on my screen, you don't have the ability to control um, control alt click and see where it came from all you have all you have at your disposal is just typing in words so um, another thing that I tend to do is group it right and so this little purple thing that I just put around all I did was control G but really it's meant for grouping multiple things and then I can take that group and move it around um, and if you want to ungroup it just right click and go to ungroup but you'll see that sometimes for some things I'll do this. I'll right click the, uh, or I'll, I'll group a single component and then I'll right click on the group and I'll name where it came from. So this one came from vector grid. So that tells you if, you if you see that I did that and you're kind of confused where a component came from, you can just go up to the vector tab and then the grid panel and you should be able to find that component. Does that make sense? Yep. Did you say control C? G. G. Control G. Okay. Um, so I have one more sort of introductory thing to show you before we start building something that's actually interesting. Um, icons. So um, at some point, I'm going to have you guys looking at online resources, referencing other definitions, or even just in your own studies, you're going to want to do that. But what's going to happen is you're going to look at a definition and it's going to look totally alien to you because it won't have these black bars. It'll have these silly little icons and you won't really understand what it actually is. So if you need to find um, or if you need to see icons uh, or if you prefer to see icons, which are basically these up here, right? So vector grid, see how it looks like this little square with the dots on the intersections? Well, you can do that by going up to display and click on draw icons and it'll change it to the actual icon um, on the actual component. Likewise, um, if for some reason you have two grids and one of them you want to name something special and you don't want to do the group thing, you can right click on the object itself, uh, not the object, on the component itself and you can change it back to that. Even though everything else is going to show up as an icon, whatever you drag in, it's going to be an icon. Um, but you can change individually between a couple of different things. Okay? So, you're probably, most of you are probably going to forget at some point that you have these tools at your disposal, um, but you will need to be able to recall that it's there, so at least you have a memory of it. 